am, am I audible? Yeah. Great. So here we have uh, Chef Mehrotra needs no introduction uh, and that makes my job very easy. <laughs> Uh, he's going to do most of the talking and I'm going to listen along with you guys. So I think the topic we'll talk today is about how close are we to fine dining. So I think we need to mull chef over the idea of, of the word fine dining. What is fine dining? It's a very loosely used word it's in this country. It's a very vague term actually. It's, it's, uh, some people understand where the restaurant is charging you 5,000 rupees per person. That is fine dining. Some people see if you're a white tablecloth restaurant, you're fine dining. If you serve only tasting menu, you are fine dining. So it, everybody thinks in a different, different way. And world over, it is not well defined what is uh, exactly is fine dining is. Uh, whether the Michelin star restaurants are fine dining, then what you will say about uh, Hawk and, Hawker Center or uh, Thailand and all these places where uh, that kind of uh, um, restaurants which have got Michelin star, but uh, they, they are, are on the street. Yeah. Um, so it's a very loose term. So we. We really have to decide like what we want to call it a fine dining or not. Um, I find where fine dining, which is um, definitely um, more research kind of a food, I would say more emphasis on given on guest experience in such a way that uh, um, it is uh, slightly slightly more luxurious than the, the than the normal places and. Um, Food is to a certain category where you don't get everything, but it is well-researched kind of a food, uh, where your wine list, which really complements your menu, um, where staff is trained in such a way uh, they, to make guests even more comfortable. So again, it's very, very difficult to explain in one uh, sentence, I would say. So let me put you into a, in a spot. Okay. Is Bukhara fine dining? That, that's what I'm saying. That's the real question, whether Bukhara is fine dining or not. Because if I have to consider Bukhara is one of the most iconic restaurants of India. It is. Um, but uh, when you see, um, you have to sit on, on a stool and uh, have the food. And uh, price point wise, it is way above than any other restaurants in, uh, in uh, India. So again, it's a very... Uh, difficult to say whether it's a fine dining or it's a it's a non fine dining restaurant. Okay, so chef, you are running restaurants now in New York City. You're running one in London. So let's talk about globally. Uh, is fine dining dine or there is a certain change in the format of fine dining? Uh, fine dining, I would say not dying, but it is growth is very very slow. Now nobody wants to have a a very stiff kind of a white tablecloth kind of a, uh, places. Uh, now there's a new term which is fine casual. Mm -hmm. That is coming into more into picture where um, it's, it's your type of crockery you're using is good, not like a, a typical casual restaurant. Um, the environment is, is, but the service is not very stiff and not very formal kind of a more service. Friendly. More friendly. Uh, the environment is slightly ease out kind of an environment. And uh, food quality and food experience and beverage experience is at the same level of, of the uh, best restaurants uh, anywhere in the world, I would say. So you're saying uh, the beverage program, the food product is as good as a fine dining, but the atmosphere around Absolutely. which you're dining is changing. So it's more and more less intimidating, I can say that. So, uh, the new concept you opened in Gurgaon called Komorin, is it fine dining or it's something else? That is what we, it's a fine casual. Fine and casual. Uh, all these concepts depend on country to country. And when we st opened Komorin, uh, our first fear was nobody should think that it is a cheaper version of Indian accent. Right. Uh, people should not feel that they have opened Indian accent in Delhi. Now, because there is a demand, they are opening a cheaper version of Indian accent there. So that was the biggest challenge uh, to overcome, that uh, people should not feel that. And they should not enter in Kamran with the same expectation what they entered in the Indian accent. So that was the biggest challenge. And food-wise, we did a lot of research. What kind of food, as an Indian, we like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, in this part of the world and uh, what will work 
whether we, what kind of an environment we want. So we wanted really international kind of a design because most of the places which are opening at this point of time in Delhi and around is mostly beverage centric. Uh, they are loud music. Menu wise, they are really diverse, yeah, like really multi-cuisine kind of a place. Uh, there's no concentration of one kind of a cuisine or um, one kind of a cuisine also like they are the Pan-Asian, whether they serve from sushi to momo, everything, uh, whether they are Mediterranean, where they serve falafel, pasta, and uh, pizza. pizza or um, everything. So we wanted that environment should be really, really international. Design should be really, really international. No dim lights, um, no shady corners, no very loud music, but the food really comfort food and to surprise people that in this kind of international design, you are getting really comfort food, which is well researched and which is Indian, which is regional and uh, no butter chicken on the menu. That's tough for Delhi, right? That's, that, that's, that's a challenge. Like people, we can always say we don't serve butter chicken in Indian accent because we are modern Indian restaurant and this and that. So now people are, now you have a casual version, why don't you serve butter chicken? So again, it's well researched uh, kind of uh, dishes, that dishes from all different parts of India in such a way that you don't miss butter chicken. So chef, uh, there was an era when pubs were very popular in London and all over the world, pubs and beer drinking, then came wine bars. And now I see with Comorin, I call it a cocktail, neighborhood cocktail eat bar. Do you think that's the future, a cocktail bar, eat bar, has moved from a wine bar to a cocktail eat bar? Is that, is that what is the trend See, now? Uh, in, in, if you uh, compare India versus Europe and America, there's a, they are very clear about what they want, uh, whether they are going for drinking or whether they are going for eating. Mm -hmm. Or whether they are going for eating along with drinking. So that is a three different types. We are clear that we are going for shouting and halla gulla. No, we, we, we are clear because we need to eat our food with our drinks most of the times, most of the time. Or like we want to drink and after that we want our comfort food. Like this is how we, because when you go in Europe with your friends, most of them they finished dinner and then they go out for outing and whole night they will drink, nothing will happen to them. But us, we need our food along with our drinks and after drink we need our uh, food again uh, which is nice um, recognizable and uh, uh, relatable kind of a food so uh, indian accent is more of a wine kind of drinking kind of a place whereas comor is more from cocktail or what what's your take on that see indian accent my my 80 percent of a beverage sale comes from wine uh, because most of the people who come, um, I think if 100 people come to Indian accent, 75 to 80 people goes for chef tasting menu. And out of which around 25 to 30 people go for wine pairing. Uh, so it's more of a wine, um, but the cocktail culture, suddenly this gin culture is like uh, blown, like it's so much all over the world, not only in India, all over the world it's so much. Uh, now after gin, uh, suddenly the tonic water culture mm -hmm. again. And now there are more tonic water than the number of gins I have in my restaurant. So... You uh, make your own tonic water or you uh, buy it? At this point of time, we are trying different, different uh, types of tonic water. Um, so, yes. Um, Comorin, we wanted it to be uh, the place where you have very good cocktails, no gimmicky cocktails. Mm -hmm. No fire, no dry ice, no liquid nitrogen. Um, really flavorful, well-researched cocktail. Um, which are natural, no um, this, uh, syrups or anything used, whatever you make, you make your own. And that is what world is moving towards, I think. So what's your take on pricing and value for money? I think uh, that's one factor which is very important in our country. So once yeah. the customer or the client leaves that door, he should feel that the money he spent on that evening is worth, has been worthwhile. What's your take on that? That, that is the very, very tough thing in India, because in India still quantity wins over quality. It is, it is true. So buffets it, people, are the people, thing. People think, people think um, Sunday brunches are big thing in all the hotels, uh, but uh, it's uh, most of the time you see how much quantity you are getting on buffet with uh, what kind of a champagne free flowing. 
and what kind of alcohol free flowing rather than what quality of food you are you are you are getting so that becomes really really uh, for the customer for the guest to see they see that more and that depends on a whether you are targeting a rickshaw wala or whether you are targeting a person who's going to a five star hotel how much you got, get in in what so pricing you have to do in such a way that um, um, people should feel that they are getting more than what they have paid for exceptions are always there bukhara indian accent where people go they spend 5000 6000 rupees per person that those are exceptions but the, in general yeah. i would say comrin kind of a place um, people really expect that uh, whatever they are spending th more than value for money sometimes so uh, since there are many hoteliers here uh, this question is from hotels not from free standing restaurants uh, when i go to most of the hotels fnb is more about buffet dining rather than a la carte whereas free standing is more about a la carte dining why do you think there's so much of buffet dining culture in hotels versus free standing i, I think it it becomes slightly easier for a hotel to do a buffet because when you have three four different restaurants on a sunday um five dishes come from your chinese place five dishes come from your uh, italian place and then you have a uh, banquet parties going around so some dishes can come from those part of the kitchens and it's easier for everyone so it's more, it's more cost con cost effective it is more convenient and uh, again people guest they prefer that okay you have so much of variety um maybe that is the reason um that is but uh, um there are concepts in uk where there are buffet stand alone restaurants mm -hmm. which have not come here till now and the day those things will come where you have um, um 400 dishes and you pay a lump sum amount um then good then it will a good competition i would say so typically you know i do some advisory work for hotels and for new brand new hotels and new con new hotels coming up typically a, hot a owner or a operating company would say let's have a all day dining let's have a chinese let's have a if not chinese a pan asian which is a very loosely used term in this country pan asian can mean anything or a italian or a indian do you think speciality restaurants like that have a life span or you think trends are changing all over the world in terms of what should be a concept which is just speciality or see speciality restaurant is uh, um very very required i would say in in uh, because again speciality restaurants for us is chinese restaurant that doesn't mean like whether it's cantonese or shezhuan or beijing shanghai where which part of the very well researched menu uh, is required and size of the restaurants has to be smaller right we don't need 100 and plus cover restaurant in 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 a hotel so what's a safe size 60 70 i think less than 60 is a perfect size you'll fill it every day and um, um cost will be it's more cost effective and uh, you won't require such a large kitchen for that well, so i think uh, that smaller restaurants are more you have a bigger coffee shop i think that you can you can definitely use so talking about table management that's a big science in free standing restaurants and i think indian accent has a great job on table management what differently you do which hotels and other places don't do in terms of table management which you do see uh, when we started indian accent for three, first three years we we really struggled and we really uh, worked hard uh, to make restaurant popular after three years when it started doing uh, there was no booking timings then mm -hmm. we started doing seven o'clock and 9:45 seating because uh, there was a demand and uh, we thought uh, this is the only way if i take a table at eight o'clock that table is sold only once for dinner so uh, i lose a lot of business so now we do seven o'clock and 9:45 and uh, that in in the beginning we really really faced lot of resistance lot of resistance you think from, india market is ready for that oh, or we, I, I think i think people are now more uh, disciplined in terms of uh, uh, restaurants i would say um, but uh, it's still still little more time i would say so we faced lot of difficulties and people used to book 
They never used to come on time. Second seating, used, people used to stand on our head. Where is our table? So we still face all these problems. It's not that we don't. But now we are in such a position that 9.30, we go to the guest and, sir, we need the table back. And we do that. Yeah. We do that. Um, and uh, they know that, that they have to vacate the table. Because this international, it is a very common practice. If you go to uh, Heston Blumenthal's place in dinner in Mandarin Oriental in London, in a booking, it is written there that your table is there only for two hours with you. So uh, internationally, yeah, it is. And, and then we started, uh, there used to be a lot of no-show. I think we are the only restaurant in India which charge money to book a table. Wow. Table for four and above, you have to pay 1,000 rupees per person to book a table. How and tough it was to start there. that? That is what, like, we started with seven people, then we did it to six, five, and four. And maybe in future, uh, we'll go further down. But... Um, and it's not credit card authorization. It is by air pay, yeah. you have to pay the money. And uh, money is with us. Remarkable. So, Remarkable. again, a lot of resistance. So, you're educating the customer how to book a table. Absolutely. Good, good. So, I leave the floor open for questions. If anybody has any questions for Chef. That's a perfect audience. Wow. Nobody has any questions. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thank man. you so much. Thank you.